And now to one of life's little frustrations. You swear you've put enough money in the parking meter, but you return to your car to find a ticket. Well, maybe you're not crazy. As Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace discovered, maybe you've been taken for a ride by cheating meters. Put your jackets on, please. These sixth graders from Somerville, New Jersey, are about to take on their government. Timer. Planning their effort with all the precision of a military campaign. Okay, let's get to work. But their crusade is not about saving the planet or ending hunger. It's about parking meters. Fired. Put their money in. While not old enough to drive, these kids understand something that's lost on many bureaucrats. A nickel and a meter should buy you a nickel's worth of time. And too often, it doesn't. I guess it kind of jipped us. What we saw in Somerville is happening across the country. In Fort Wayne, Indiana, a reporter found that one out of three meters was not giving motorists their money's worth. In Dallas, a TV investigation revealed some meters giving parkers half the time they paid for. But the public outcry began three years ago in Berkeley, California, the town that's famous for power to the people. Everyone's gotten a parking ticket, and everyone hates getting a parking ticket. It started when Ellie Lammer, then 11 years old, went downtown with her mother. They were certain they put enough money in the meter for an hour, but ended up with a $20 ticket. We were angry because we knew we, we had only been there for a half an hour. I mean, we knew we had been cheated. Ellie decided to make it her sixth grade science project to see if 50 meters chosen at random could actually keep time. Ellie put in enough money for eight minutes and got anywhere from 90 seconds to 16 minutes. I mean, Ellie, you make it sound like it's kind of a, a crapshoot when you put in your eight minutes. It is. It's totally, it's like going to the slot machines. You have, you have no idea what's going to come out. Ellie found that 66% of the meters gave a little extra time, while 28% cheated the parker. Almost none, only 6%, gave people what they paid for. If most meters give extra time to the parker, what's the big deal? Well, you can either get a $20 parking ticket or 20 seconds extra. And the penalty is a heck of a lot yeah, worse than the benefit. Yeah, a heck of a lot worse than a minute extra. But Ellie Lammer's sixth grade science project didn't end in her classroom. The fact that almost none of the parking meters here in Berkeley could actually keep proper time soon found its way into the local papers and started to put some heat on public officials. Can you understand why people would be ticked off to find out that the parking meters were inaccurate? Yes, absolutely. Berkeley official Patrick Kelch knew they had a problem with the old mechanical meters, which are like clocks that wear out over time. After all the fuss over Ellie's science project, the city installed what he called the Sherman tank of parking meters, digital devices that supposedly keep perfect time. And after Ellie testified before the California legislature, they passed what is known as the Lammer Law to keep parking meters honest across the state. And here now, to tell that story, 12-year-old Ellie Lammer. Ellie! Soon, Ellie was appearing on network television. Did folks think you were wacky doing that? Oh, my God. People would come up to me and say, you don't have to put money in the parking meter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially if you don't have a car, either. Right. <laughs> By the time the great parking meter controversy hit Seattle, it was no longer just a sixth grade science project. A local TV station did a full-scale investigation of the meters here. And in one of those only in America developments, the accuracy of the meters would eventually become the subject of a class action lawsuit. Well, the rest cheated us by eight minutes, by ten minutes. In Seattle's Como TV broke the story. The local officials admitted an estimated 30% of the meters were shortchanging people. It just expired. The city responded by starting a program it said would take three years to overhaul its meters. But in the meantime, they kept giving out parking tickets. The only way it seemed that the city was going to do anything was if we slapped them with a lawsuit and said either fix it or you're going to pay. The case attracted high-powered attorney Steve Berman who has battled big tobacco and internet giants. His lawsuit demands the city repay what he says is an estimated $15 million in unfair tickets to all those mistreated motorists. You are all suing the city over parking meters? Yep, absolutely. Parking in Seattle is very expensive. 
when it's enhanced by a $25 fine that I don't deserve, I'm a little indignant. When you put your money in, you expect to get your time. The city says anyone who believes they were short time by a meter should have challenged their ticket in court. The parking meter plaintiffs say, get real. I couldn't drive downtown for $25. So even though you knew this ticket was unfair, absolutely, you're going to eat it. Oh, absolutely. I think they count on it. Under fire, Seattle's mayor repaired or replaced thousands of meters. Not in three years, but 90 days. Still not enough, says Berman. His suit was recently dismissed by a judge. But he and his clients plan to appeal all the way to the state Supreme Court. We're talking about a parking ticket here. Can you understand why someone might say, get a life? Yeah, I can. But you know what? I want my five bucks back. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to see for ourselves if there's a problem in other places. We ended up in Somerville, New Jersey, where people have been complaining for years about inaccurate meters. It's been a constant problem. People are always getting tickets here. And when you complain about the meters, there is no action taken on it. So following Berkeley's example, we went to the Somerville Middle School and asked those sixth graders to go into the field for us. Ready? Go. We got 22 minutes and 24 seconds. Instead of 30 Instead of minutes. 30 minutes. Five minutes and five seconds less time than an hour. Inaccurate. After the kids tested 95 meters, we brought them together to discuss what they found. While many meters gave extra time, 38% cheated the parker. I told my mom not to park anywhere near lot one or two if she ever went downtown. Just stay away, huh? Yeah. And what would they tell city officials? They should fix all the meters because people are, have to pay tickets when they shouldn't. I would hope uh, that they would have found no more than 5% that are being, um, that are inaccurate. Somerville's mayor, David Hollid, says the town is on top of its parking meters. What if I told you that the kids here in the middle school found that 38 percent, 38 percent, are cheating parkers? I would want to go out there and do our own check and verify those results and take them out of service immediately. Within 24 hours of getting the results, Somerville began taking its cheating meters off the streets. The sixth graders had struck a blow for parkers everywhere. And one of them spoke for all of us when he addressed the age-old question, why can't parking meters keep time? This really surprised me because I'm thinking if we could launch into space, how come we can't just fix a parking meter? Fair question. I think so, yeah. <laughs> and we'll be right back.